Hi everyone, welcome to our homestead. Can you believe that it's time for these plants to be up potted already? So these were started from seed 19 days ago and look at them, look at how big they are. They're already like four inches tall. Definitely time for them to come out of these little starting pots and into some bigger containers. So what I'm using today is the um, two inch pots and I like using the square ones rather than the round ones because they fit very neatly in, in these square trays and I can just place them in here and have the whole uh, tray then inside one of these watering containers and then when I water them I can just place water in the this bottom container and have these roots digging down deep to uh, to get that water instead of watering it from the top. So I really I really prefer these. Um, just kind of a note if you're starting to do this 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 year. I um, started a bunch of stuff in those round containers last year, and I really I really didn't care for them. So I prefer the the square ones, and I'm hoping that. I won't have to repot these, that the two inch pots will be sufficient. Um, but it is possible that I may have to up pot them once more. We still have um, a good month, month and a half before these will be ready to go in the garden. So if they keep growing like they have been, I may need to do that. Now, I am really pleased with these. I am a little bit disappointed in some of the other ones. and. Again, I know I mentioned this in the last video. I'm really thinking it was user error. I don't think it had anything to do with the seeds. So I unfortunately don't have a lot of paste tomatoes. I have a few of them, but not a whole lot. Most of these are slicers and they are beautiful. So I'm gonna have lots of slicing tomatoes and I may have to use those for paste this season also. I'll just have to cook them down a little bit longer. So what I'm what I have here, the mix that I'm using is uh, potting soil and you really can use any potting soil but you do want to use potting soil. Don't go to, to straight uh, garden container soil. These roots are still pretty young so they'll need a little help getting, um, getting what they need and garden soil is a little too heavy I think. So I'm using potting soil. This is the landscapers pride naturally organic and I've not used it before I picked it up from my local feed store but it is it is made here in Texas so it's got to be good and I edit added some of this fertilizer to them and it's the happy frog organic fertilizer I mentioned in my last video that some of these tomato plants were struggling the bottoms of the leaves were turning purple and so I was going to add some nitrogen fertilizer just the fish emulsion and then later on add something that had more phosphorus in it so this was what I purchased was this happy frog organic fertilizer that had extra phosphorus in it and guys I mean I, do I need to say anything look at that the results are phenomenal so I'm following their instructions and actually mixing some of that into this potting soil so that my plants have um, a good start getting themselves established in here. And I think the result is going to be stronger plants from beginning and probably all the way to the end too, hopefully. So one of the things that I have not mentioned yet is if you're starting your plants indoors, you are obviously babying them, right? And we want that for these young plants because we want them to have a chance. If we put them outside, they probably won't do well. But because of that, these are not encountering any wind. They're, they're protected, right? The downside to that is that these stems get to be very spindly and not very strong and same for their roots. So if that's the case, if you're starting things indoors where they're not going to have any natural airflow, then what you ought to do is either place an oscillating fan near them so that it kind of blows them and they get stronger 
or a couple of times a day, just run your hand across them, just about like that, and it will encourage those stems to get stronger so that when you transition them to outdoors, they won't all just fall over and break off. That's a very, very important um, lesson right there. Now, just like I did with my seed starting soil, I went ahead and added water to this potting soil before placing it in here, just because it'll help so much to have it already hydrated. Otherwise, it takes a lot of water to, to get it watered after I put my plants in, and so I went ahead and mixed water into it ahead of time. And again, you don't want it to be soggy, but you do want it to be well hydrated. So I'm going to fill these up kind of about three quarters of the way, like that with potting soil. Oh, and as far as the fertilizer, the recommended usage for new uh, potting plants is two tablespoons of fertilizer to one gallon of soil. So I'm starting with about four, four gallons of soil and I've added a half a cup of fertilizer and I just kind of loosely measured. I didn't, I wasn't precise with it, but I think that should work out just fine. So you all know already how much I love these trays, right? Because I can water everything from the bottom and because they're reusable and pop up. Um, you can see the roots in there. So when your roots are uh, visible on the side like that, it's definitely time for them to be transplanted into something larger. So to pop these out easily, um, because this is kind of a big tray, what I do is I just set it down on the edge like that to where I have this row exposed and then just push on the bottom and out comes your little start. Look at that. Now I do have two tomatoes in here and I'm going to leave them in there. Oftentimes when you're at the uh, store, when you're purchasing these at the store, you may find that you have some pots that have two plants in them. I highly encourage getting those, by the way, that's pretty much a buy one, get one free. So because tomatoes are pretty resilient, I will be able to separate these later when I put them in the garden and I will get two tomatoes out of one pot, which is going to be really nice. So if you remember in the first video, I mentioned that you should write down what tomatoes you, or what plants you have where. I think at some point I turned this around um, and now I can't remember which way I started it to begin with. So that's a warning, y'all do better than I did. All I know at this point is these are slicers and I'll just have to see whenever they start producing what exactly I have in there. So there we are. Just make a hole right in the center there where you want your little plant start and just drop it right in push it down a little bit to make sure that those all of those roots make contact with the soil and then tuck them in there are some plants that i will start indoors from seed in uh, seed starters just like this tomatoes bell peppers eggplant um, all of your brassicas, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kohlrabi, those things are, I think, great to start indoors. This might depend too on the area where you live, but here in the south, we have such long planting seasons that some things are not worth starting indoors. Why is that? Um, cucumbers, perfect example they will go through a little bit of root shock when you move them from a container into your garden. And all garden plants will. Um, it takes them a few days to get established, some more than others. And cucumbers, um, all of your squashes, zucchini, same thing. They, they go through quite a, bit of, quite a bit of root shock and have a harder time recovering from that. As far as sprouting, they sprout really fast from seed. So what I've noticed, and I actually tried this last year, I 
place them in the ground that I had started indoors in little containers like this and then I direct sowed some of them in the ground the ones that I direct sow actually did a lot better because they didn't have to um, recover from being transplanted so when it comes to things like that um, beans peas cucumbers all, all of the squashes I won't start those um, indoors I'll just direct sow those straight in the ground pretty much the same thing with like all of my lettuces spinach so just keep that in mind if you're getting those things at the store and they've already been started and I'm not saying that they won't work out for you but they're pretty costly and you'll probably have just as much success just starting them from seed so you know you, you take that for whatever it's worth that's the advice of a um, very beginner gardener but it might save you a little bit of headache and some money in the long run something else I want to mention too it's we're getting towards the end of February right now and it's quite possible that in the next few days couple of weeks we're gonna start seeing plant starts already at the uh, stores for sale keep in mind that just because you find them at the store doesn't mean that they're ready to go in the ground um, so do some research check your uh, your garden zone and your area and find out when those things should actually be planted for example and we're in the south here and it's pretty warm I don't put my tomatoes and bell peppers in the ground until the beginning of April I found out that especially with bell peppers if you put them in the ground too soon and that ground is not um, warm enough it will stunt those bell peppers and I I learned that last year I had not successfully grown bell peppers until last year so all those years before that I tried and I, I just assumed that if they're selling them at the store it must be time and I put them in the ground and they never did well and I never knew why until I held back a little bit and didn't put them in the ground until the beginning of, the, of April and they did great and that I think especially important for you folks who are up north to know that um, I have family who lives in Missouri I think they put their tomatoes and bell peppers in the ground in like something like the end of May maybe even beginning of June so just make sure that you're checking your local zone and find out when you're supposed to put those things in the ground and don't don't put them in too early you'll waste your time time and your money getting those plants and putting them uh, planting them too soon all right, we're gonna keep working on this until we get all of these plant starts repotted. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for coming along. If you did, please subscribe to our channel, share this with your friends on social media, give us a thumbs up, and y'all come back and stay tuned. We're gonna be doing a lot more videos on life on the homestead, um, our animals, our plants, and um, also some recipes are gonna be coming up in the near future too. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. Until next time, y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.